What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katia, and in today's lesson, we're going to learn some advanced vocabulary. This video is especially aimed at students who are going to take an English exam at the official school of languages in Spain. Anyway, this advanced vocabulary can stand you in good stead when sitting any other official exams like the CAE or proficiency. Are you ready to expand your vocabulary? If so, grab your notebook and let's kick off! Before we start, I'm going to give you the correct answer to the bonus question I asked you in the previous video. And the correct sentence is James bears no resemblance to his father. So the correct verb is to bear, to bear no resemblance to somebody. And resemblance is a C2 noun. So now we're going to learn some advanced vocabulary that could be useful when talking about a topic, which is part one, or you can also use it in the second part, which is a dialogue. So the first C2 adjective I want to teach you today is lenient. Lenient. It's long E. Lenient. And it means not as strict as expected when it comes to punishing somebody. So for example, if your topic is about crime, you could use this adjective. Some nouns that are usually used with this adjective are, for example, a lenient law or a lenient fine or sentence or attitude. And the opposite of lenient is severe. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, we won't be able to reduce the number of road accidents with lenient laws. We won't be able to reduce the number of road accidents with lenient laws. The second example, if we want to tackle internet piracy, we can't apply such lenient laws. If we want to tackle internet piracy, we can't apply such lenient laws. And the last example, some laws are too lenient with corrupted politicians. Some laws are too lenient with corrupted politicians. Now let's move on to a useful verb, which is to take a hit. To take a hit. It means to be badly affected by a difficult problem or situation. And now a few examples. The first one, mental health is likely to take a hit when you are in lockdown. Mental health is likely to take a hit when you are in lockdown. The second example, needless to say, the global economy has taken a hit in 2020. Needless to say, the global economy has taken a hit in 2020. And the last example, some employers are afraid that their workers' productivity may take a hit when working from home. Some employers are afraid that their workers' productivity may take a hit when working from home. Now let's move on to our expression number three, which is a topical issue, or we can also say a topical question. And it means that it's a question or an issue of interest at the present time. And now a few examples. The first one, needless to say, the coronavirus is a topical issue nowadays. Needless to say, the coronavirus is a topical issue nowadays. The second example, the economic crisis and unemployment are topical issues. The economic crisis and unemployment are topical issues. And the last example here, first, the government should address topical issues. First, the government should address topical issues. 
Let's continue our expression number four is a burning issue or we can also say a burning question. If something is a burning issue, it means that it must be dealt with or answered quickly. And now three examples. The first one, dealing with the recession is a burning issue. Dealing with the recession is a burning issue. The second example, providing a vaccine against the pandemic virus is a burning issue. Providing a vaccine against the pandemic virus is a burning issue. And one more example, slowing down global warming is a burning issue. Slowing down global warming is a burning issue. Let's move on to our expression number five, which is it's a mood point. It's a mood point. Pronunciation long O. Mood. It's a mood point. If something is a mood point, it means that it's a matter about which there might be a difference of opinion or a lack of understanding. This expression is a synonym of a vexed point, question or topic. The first example, the use of surveillance equipment in public places is a mood point. Some people believe it can guarantee public safety while others think it's an intrusion into privacy. The use of surveillance equipment in public places is a mood point. Some people believe it can guarantee public safety while others think it's an intrusion into privacy. The second example, having to wear a mask is a mood point. Having to wear a mask is a mood point. And the last example, it's a mood point whether it's right to raise cigarette taxes. It's a mood point whether it's right to raise cigarette taxes. And guys, before we continue, just a super quick reminder to subscribe to my channel and activate the notifications so that you know whenever there is a new weekly lesson. And now let's continue with the lesson, our expression number six, a growing trend. A growing trend. It means a general tendency that is becoming more important. And now some examples. The first one, remote working is a growing trend. Remote working is a growing trend. Number two, buying an electric car is a growing trend. Buying an electric car is a growing trend. And one more example, generating solar energy at home is a growing trend. Generating solar energy at home is a growing trend. Let's continue our expression number seven is on the rise or on the increase. On the rise or on the increase. If something is on the rise or on the increase, it means that it's increasing in number or amount. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, the trend of plastic surgery to fight against time is on the rise. The trend of plastic surgery to fight against time is on the rise. The second example, unfortunately, cybercrime is on the rise in our technological society. Unfortunately, cybercrime is on the rise in our technological society. And the last example, I'm afraid violence may be on the increase as a result of some violent games and movies. I'm afraid violence may be on the increase as a result of some violent computer games and movies. Okay, let's move on to our expression number eight, which is at an alarming rate. At an alarming rate. If something is happening at an alarming rate, it means that something negative is happening very fast. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, crime has been increasing 
at an alarming rate. Crime has been increasing at an alarming rate. The second example, polar ice caps are melting at an alarming rate. Polar ice caps are melting at an alarming rate. And the last example, unemployment is rising at an alarming rate. Unemployment is rising at an alarming rate. And now let's move on to our second to last expression, which is in this day and age. In this day and age. It means at the present time. And now some examples. The first one, in this day and age, we need to be flexible, embrace uncertainty and be able to reinvent ourselves. In this day and age, we need to be flexible, embrace uncertainty and be able to reinvent ourselves. The second example, in this day and age, mastering English makes a huge difference when looking for a job. In this day and age, mastering English makes a huge difference when looking for a job. And the last example, in this day and age, we need to opt for a slower way of life. In this day and age, we need to opt for a slower way of life. And last but not least, our expression number 10, to name but a few. To name but a few. We use it when we mention only a small number of people or things as examples of a large group. And now, three examples. The first one, to help the planet, we can recycle, use fabric bags and energy efficient light bulbs, to name but a few. To help the planet, we can recycle, use fabric bags and energy efficient light bulbs, to name but a few. The second example, stress can cause insomnia, hair loss, heart disease, to name but a few. Stress can cause insomnia, hair loss, heart disease, to name but a few. And the last example, addiction to social networks may lead to a lack of concentration, a waste of time and low self-esteem, to name but a few. Addiction to social networks may lead to a lack of concentration, a waste of time and low self-esteem, to name but a few. So guys, that's it for today. I wish good luck to those of you who are taking an English exam at the official School of Languages next September. And if you need some private classes to prepare this exam in August, you can get in touch with me my email address is in the description box. And I really hope you found this English bit useful and it will help you with your exam preparation. Guys, if you learned something new, please don't forget to give this lesson a huge thumbs up, to share it with your friends who are going to take this exam. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and catch me on Instagram. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!